Hi there guys and welcome to another show. This is a show where we are talking about startups, business, investors, entrepreneurship, about the people who are building value in this world. Because if you have any ideas or you want to see some problems solved, there is no better way than building a successful business. Why? Because if you are able to build a business, if you are able to provide value to the people, they will be using your services and you will be making a profit. After you are making a profit, you are able to use that money, use that resource and solve the problems you otherwise couldn't solve unless you had the resource. And the most valuable resource in the world and how we define everything is through money monetary. So this is a story about China and how is business done in China, how the people uh, uh, in China actually build their companies and how their companies look like when they achieve some kind of success. Quite different from the Western companies and that's where everybody say business in China is done differently. We're going firstly to talk about one of BAT companies, BAT standing for Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent. We're going to talk about Alibaba because I think the story is the most important. Very passionate founder in 1999 had a group of 17 people in his small apartment and they were talking about going after eBay and Amazon at the time. Uh, today they provide much more services than both of them combined. They have very diversified portfolio with a lot of services. Let's dive in and see. They started like Alibaba, uh, a website where foreigners would come to China and purchase something from manufacturers and uh, export from China to their countries. That was the first initial idea that uh, started in that small apartment. Well, a couple of years later, uh, they were looking for something that can produce more capital, that they were looking for additional revenue sources, and they came out with brilliant idea, which was called uh, Taobao. Taobao immediately started competing with eBay um, because it was a C2C uh, e-commerce platform. And eBay at the time was dominant player in the US mostly, in Europe not so much, but uh, they were very, very uh, considered to be very high uh, execution, very high power e-commerce website that's going to go and conquer all the, the markets. Well, in China, the Taobao was born and uh, Taobao offered many more uh, small services. They cared more about uh, the people using Taobao than the eBay. The eBay had a very strict rules and very strict regulations, what could be done, what couldn't. They refused to follow the users. They refused to localize their platform here in China too. They, they, they didn't... Um, they didn't listen to the customers in China, I would say, uh, would be much more uh, better for you to understand. Well, Alibaba at the time started something called Tmall. Tmall was uh, completely different from, from uh, Taobao. It was the idea that they will list all the shops that exist in a traditional shopping mall. So if you had a registered business, you were invited on the Tmall e-commerce e platform and you were you were able to sell your products to the customers in other words it's not c to c it's b to c and in this way they are supporting the businesses well it was very hard to build two e-commerces at once so what they end up doing is they were using the the, the businesses that existed on tmall they were allowing them to uh, uh, showcase their products in taobao and in that way the website that was already beating uh, uh, eBay in the marketing and had more users and were more engaged got a huge uh, supply of inventory to sell and this made Taobao work and this model keep working they keep irritating on it and eventually they, they beat eBay now, when we are talking about e-commerce, it's important to uh, mention that there is something called 1688.com. This is um, also an e-commerce, but in this e-commerce compared to others, uh, people can group together, 
for example, I can find five friends and we would go to a uh, 1688, we can find a product and we can join together to purchase that product with a big discount from manufacturing directly. And then we can sell on Taobao or on Tmall or we can sell in our shop, similar things like that. So 1688 is supplying the distributors. It's basically how it works. And the final uh, e-commerce that probably uh, people know outside of China is called AliExpress. It is an e-commerce that powers all the dropshipping. So if you have ever bought something uh, through dropshipping, the 99% chance, actually I, I think maybe it's even 100%, uh, percent, it's come from AliExpress. AliExpress has a global logistic and delivery service and everybody are using, um, I think it's called uh, Shopify. Yeah, everybody using Shopify to connect with AliExpress and they're doing drop shipping. So you can just search some some video online and, and you know, get familiar that actually everything is much cheaper on AliExpress than you're buying it through someone's drop shipping website. Now, logistics. Uh, there is a company that Alibaba owns called uh, Chao Ni Ao and they are providing logistic support uh, both domestically in China and globally uh, uh, for delivery and that's what powers AliExpress and other um, other e-commerces that uh, Alibaba has. Now Alibaba don't have their own delivery unit compared to Amazon who controls 100% of the delivery and things like that. Alibaba don't because they have too many orders. Um, the, the numbers are, are really crazy. They get uh, like a 100 million orders per day on 11th uh, of November. So it's, it's a massive, massive shopping day in, in China. And globally, they also operate too many. I mean, these numbers, I don't even know if they're, they're right or not. Now, uh, the, the, the Alibaba company has something called Alimama. Uh, Alimama is a marketing uh, unit, the marketing uh, big department that provide uh, marketing services for all Alibaba products. So uh, they are able to, if you're using any of their services and you need marketing, you will be working with Alimama to market your uh, uh, goods. Now we come to the next chapter of their business, and that's Ali Cloud. Uh, this is this is amazing. I think sixty percent of the of the businesses that operate uh, online in China use this. This is simply mind blowing. The 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 computing that Ali Ali Cloud has it's really world class. Uh, if you are looking for uh, world-class uh, uh, cloud computing solution hosting you definitely should check uh, Ali Cloud just to get yourself familiar with what uh, they have it's a really amazing and we're coming to the last product in the Alibaba family it's called Alipay you probably heard about this if you ever used any of their e-commerces or, or any of their services or if you have ever been in China in the last 10 years, you probably heard about Alipay. It is simply one of the fastest solutions for mobile payments and uh, uh, also e-commerce payments solutions in China. And I heard they're expanding outside of China. For example, they're going to Southeast Asia and um, the, the business is simply growing so much. To think about Alipay, I would just say, think about Apple Pay, PayPal, and probably some other services combined together. That's how how big Alipay is. I think they have a massive, massive transactions per day, especially because all the shops use them and, and things like that, not only online. Now, uh, now we take a look at the uh, investments that Alibaba made. Alibaba has more than 300 investments, so it's impossible for us to cover them all. But I'm going to talk about some of the portfolio companies they semi-operate, that they have uh, acquired a big stake in those companies. The number one is Yuku. It's a company 
we would understand probably similar to Netflix and YouTube combined, something in that in in, in that uh, entertainment style. And we have a company Ofo, uh, bike sharing app, uh, bike sharing company that I'm gonna be talking to you uh, in one of the next uh, uh, episodes. And uh, Alibaba also have a booking hotel, booking train tickets, airplane tickets, and they have too many other services that are not worth mentioning. But uh, if you find any service that you think it should be mentioned here, just leave in the comments so other people can also uh, pay attention to that. Of course, uh, pay attention, they're expanding their portfolio on a year basis, they get a new service, they acquire some company. For example, I know they are starting to uh, do something with games, game companies, because gaming in China has become uh, difficult and there are some rules about gaming in China. So I don't know how, how that's happening, but I know that they are trying to enter a game uh, uh, market. Um, Beside that, uh, we just learned recently that uh, Jack Ma, the founder of the company, is going to retire, he's going to leave Alibaba completely, and he's going to commit himself to do some other things. Now, he's a very wealthy man and uh, very successful, of course. So, um, if we listen to his speeches or things he said, he's probably going to go back to do some education and uh, investment. Like he said, it's in, in that time, people should invest young people and uh, help them um, start the businesses. So, um, guys, if you have any question about Alibaba or you're looking to do something with Alibaba, you need to reach out to Alibaba and uh, you need some help in doing so. Uh, just leave the things in the comments and don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video if you find it, find it bringing you any value. Once again, guys. Stay with us, we bring news about entrepreneurship and this was a lesson about Chinese business and Alibaba. Take care everyone.